Say hello to this little guy right here. The brand, Picasso AI. The model, it doesn't officially have a model name as far as I could find. But what it does is it takes your manufacturer CarPlay system, your wired CarPlay system, and it turns it into a full blown Android operating system. This thing comes stacked with Android 9, 32 gigs of storage, four gigs of RAM, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, AirPlay, Google Cast support, Google Maps, and probably my favorite feature of them all, access to the Google Play Store. Now you don't get full access to the Google Play Store. There are some apps that aren't available. I'll talk more about that a little later on in the review though. Okay, so the intro is done out the way. No more voiceover. I'm gonna actually hop inside the car. I wanna give you a sort of one-on-one -on -one demonstration of the system in action, actually going over bits and pieces about the system, all the pros and cons. Oh, 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 before we hop inside the car though, let me give you a full disclosure. Yes, I was sent this by the company to review. No, they have no idea what I'm gonna say. And no, they have not asked me to say anything in this review, but whatever the heck I want to. So let's hop inside the car. So we're at the in-car portion of the video and I do wanna start off by saying I do apologize if the camera is shaking. This is the best solution that I could come up with to get the camera to just kind of be in this position to show this. And it is a little shaky and I'm gonna try my hardest not to get it to shake, but uh, if it does wobble a little bit, I do apologize for it. So secondly, let me go ahead and start off and start this portion off with me giving an overview of this system and what I like and don't like about it. So what I do like about it is its intended purpose of being something that you actually uh, watch YouTube videos, Netflix videos, you're watching content in the car, of course, while parked. Uh, that works very, very well for the most part. But if you're going to use this as a CarPlay replacement, I don't necessarily think that it's good for that. Uh, one initial thing, reason why I say that is because Apple Music just is a little cut off. Apple Music isn't exactly scaled correctly. So let me go ahead and pull it up here and I'll show you. You can see the side of the now playing screen is just cut off. So you don't even have the little three dots that are on the side that you can mess around with stuff with. When you go to the browse section here and you just uh, and you scroll like you have really big album arts. Um, it's just it's just really big. But besides that, it does work. It does play your music. Your string wheel buttons work. I'll pull this up and, and just prove to you. Push the string wheel buttons. The string wheel buttons do work. They only work inside the app. When you go back to the home screen and use string wheel buttons, they do not work. It works like it's supposed to. It's just the scaling of this app doesn't work. So I go home really quickly and I will show you that there actually is a setting inside the settings menu where you can adjust scaling and let's click on this and you go to general settings. You can adjust the scaling right here, but it changes the DPI for all third party apps. Apple Music is really the only app that has this problem. So when I actually make Apple Music look correctly, it messes up all the other apps. So that's kind of a lose-lose situation right there. So we'll go back home here. Another th reason that I say it's not really a CarPlay replacement is because you don't really have access to sending text messages. Of course, you you're driving, so you really shouldn't be. But I do like having the convenience to have Siri in the car, have Siri send a quick message or reply to a quick message and move on. I also do not like the way phone calls sound. Phone calls do not sound good on this system when you actually connect the Bluetooth because this does have Bluetooth in here. You can then go to your phone and you can actually call people and things like that. It just really doesn't sound good at all. So another thing about the system that is it can get bogged down. And so what I do is just click on the app switcher and do clear all. And then I'll go into my cleanup, clean it up, clean up all that RAM and things start to move quickly once again. So that's really my main gripe about this is that it just isn't really a good CarPlay replacement. But it being something that you actually do use for YouTube music and Netflix, Twitch, it works really well. So let me go ahead and give you a deep dive now into some of these apps. I'll go ahead and show you YouTube. So you see YouTube opens up decently quickly. Uh, things here are scaled correctly for the most part. The only aspect, there's only one aspect of YouTube that doesn't scale correctly and I'll show you that in a second. So let me just click on a random video. So I'll just click on this here. This is a live stream. So you see it works. Let me turn it up for you. You see when you click it, it instantly shows up in a full screen. So if you do want to actually look at some of the comments or you do want to give this video a thumbs up and things like that, you can go ahead and minimize it right here. It will minimize into this screen. And then that's when you can go ahead and like and comment and blah, blah, blah. 
this is the other portion that I would want to talk about that uh, does not scale correctly. The suggested videos here just don't scale correctly at all. They're just entirely too big. The shorts portion is fine, but that's really it. And I do suggest that you actually open up YouTube and you actually update YouTube because when I initially downloaded this, when I initially uh, signed in and started using YouTube, it just did not work correctly at all. It made me have to just continue to update it to the latest version so that everything actually worked correctly and looked fine on this system. Okay, so we'll move on from YouTube and go on to the next app that I use, which is Twitch. Twitch works just fine in here. It does have some times where it will just not really want to work correctly. As far as it just means it's a little twitchy with videos with the live streams but for the most part twitch works really really well in here so i'll go ahead and play um, a twitch streamer that i actually do like to watch uh, let me go ahead and click this again going by myself and you see here it's working it's playing her video, it's playing the live stream, it's playing it just fine. Um, when you click here, you do have access to, um, um, there we go. You do have access to, you know, everything that you can see on, look at it again. Everything that you see on Twitch on your phone, it's right here. And if you did want to watch the chat while in here, boom, you could double tap and bring the chat up right there on the side. But other than that, there is nothing really wrong with Twitch. I don't, there isn't any scaling issues with Twitch. Twitch actually looks uh, just fine. Nothing wrong with the way the Twitch looks and the way the Twitch works. I'll show you these sections here too. It just it looks fine. So I'll go ahead and go home, and then we will open up the next section, which is going to be Netflix. Now Netflix is honestly the most consistent performing app on here. It just works very very well. It, it, it's it loads videos up quickly. It plays them. It just looks really nicely. Uh, Netflix is just a really nice app on here. So I'll just show you. Uh, I'll, I'll load up an episode of Nailed It. Or I'll continue watching this episode and nailed it. And it just plays instantly. <laughs> no problems. I have no issue with Netflix at all. It doesn't have any scaling issues. It doesn't have any buffering issues. It just works very, very well. So I'll go ahead and go on to the next app, which is going to be HBO Max. Now, HBO Max is the worst app on here. And... I guess that's kind of consistent with how HBO Max performs on other platforms as well. But HBO Max just not, does not work correctly at all. It does not scale correctly. And you'll see in a second when it loads up. It doesn't scale correctly and it just looks terrible. You see here, it's just extremely too big. And then I'll go here and actually just play something. I'm not even logged into HBO Max anymore because of how bad this works. So I'll click on here and I'll show you another problem with HBO Max. I'll just play this free episode here. It's probably going to load an ad up. Okay, so we'll have this playing here. I don't even know what show this is. So the major problem I have with HBO Max is that it just doesn't scale correctly. But when you actually leave the app, so I'll leave the app and I'll go home. And I'll stay here for just a quick second here. Uh, okay, now I'll go ahead and open up HBO Max again. HBO Max just doesn't work after that. Like nothing works. It's just frozen and nothing works. You know, you can't even go back. You know, it's just just doesn't work for some reason. So the only thing that I could really do is just click this menu here and go back this way and then click it, click the show again and restart playing it in order for it to work. But yeah, HBO Max just doesn't work correctly in this at all. OK, so the next app that I want to go ahead and show you is Prime Video. Prime Video works really well. There's no scaling issues with Prime Video at all. It's just nothing wrong with Prime Video. It just it works. So I'll go ahead and play just something really quickly. Uh, we'll just play this Justin Bieber thing here. Um, it, it loads it up quickly. It plays, you know, everything works with Prime Video. There is no back button for Prime Video as far as I know. So in order to get out of the video player, you do have to click this little dot here that pops up when you click the menu. When you click on the screen, I mean, and then go back. And that's how you can go back to here. But there, there's no scaling issues with Prime Video at all. So I'll show you the store portion of it. It just it works. It looks great. It's almost like you're using this on an Android TV, basically, like it just works really well. There's no issues with Prime Video that I've, I've come across. So I'll go ahead and go back home. That was really quickly because there's nothing wrong with Prime Video. 
uh, Paramount Plus. There is a slight issue with Paramount Plus, but it's not a big deal. So I'll go ahead and let Paramount Plus load up and I will explain what that is in just a second. And as you'll see here, as it loads in, the one issue with Paramount Plus is the top portion does not scale correctly, which I'm OK with, because if it did, it probably would be way too big. But you see here, it just doesn't work at all. So you see shows, movies, news, and you have watch now, all that stuff just bunched up there. So if you did want to click on one of those sub menus of shows or movies, you have to scroll down and then scroll back up and then you can click on shows, movies and news. But other than that, it works fine. I'll show you the live TV portion of it. And I'll just play my local um, CBS station really quickly. Loads quickly, shows up, and it just plays my local CBS station. Instead of using aloe or baby wipes or powders. So my stomach is rumbling. I don't know if you heard that. I'll go back here to the home screen. And then I will show you what it's like to just play an episode and how quickly that loads too. So... So, yeah, there is also no back button for Prime um, for Paramount Plus. So you do have to click this and go back here. So, yeah, it works fine. There's nothing wrong with Paramount Plus. It works well. I will go ahead now and show you Philo. Uh, I don't use Philo so, so much because I'm not a really a live TV person. And when I do watch live TV, I prefer to use YouTube TV. But YouTube TV is not a part of this. You can't download this from the Play Store. So that's a big bummer. But Philo works and scales correctly just fine too. I have not run into any scaling issues with, with Philo. If I go back up here and go to the menu, you'll see I can show you the guide. And then I'll scroll down here and there's just no issues with it. I'll back, go back up to the guide here. I'll show you top. Um, yeah, it's just nothing wrong with it. And it actually has a time here. It's, it, I like that. It actually has a time right there in the top portion because uh, it's another thing with this is that you don't really don't have quick access to time. So say I have nothing saved. So I'll go ahead and just play a quick um, channel. Uh, I tend to watch MTV Live when I do watch Philo. So I'll go ahead and show this really quickly. Loads up quickly. That's what it's supposed to do. I like it. Philo works well. So I'm back in the studio. I'm going to go ahead and end the video off with the crispy voiceover. And I'll say I really, really do like this device for its intended purpose, like I said before. And and I will say, I didn't say this earlier in the video, but the Wi-Fi on it is very strong and it just works. I don't even have to do much. Before I even get in the car, I turn on my hotspot on my phone. I put the phone in my pocket, turn the car on, and it automatically connects to my phone's hotspot easily, no problems. That happened virtually every time I use this device. As a CarPlay replacement, like I said before, it's not really for me, but for you, it very well could be. You do have access to any music app you want, and they work decently well. You do have split screens. You can have maps on one side and something else on the other side. But for me, its strongest point, its strongest use case is that content consumption of having YouTube on there, having Netflix on there, having Paramount Plus on there, having Prime Video. That use case is its strongest suit for me, and it works very, very well. So with that, I'll leave you. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. And if you want to buy one of these, hit up that link in the description below. Click it. And there's actually a coupon. You can actually save $30 right now if you click that coupon on Amazon. Thank you. And I will see you in the next video.